Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Dakota of Dakota Woods Outfitter, and today we're going to be cooking a simple meal that you can collect pretty much anywhere on your way to a campsite if for whatever reason you've forgotten something or maybe it's just a quick overnighter and you wanted to go ahead and do a challenge. Um, we've also had a lot of folks in the comment section and in, in uh, person ask me if I could do a video on camp spam. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to talk a little bit about why I like this particular uh, meal. Um, I think camp spam is a great thing to have. It's a very simple, hearty meal. It does it does well for two people. It does extremely well for one person. It's, it's really two meals in my opinion. But uh, me personally, I don't eat pork, so or at least I try not to. And so I'm going to go ahead and use the turkey spam. We're gonna you can substitute whatever flavor you want. This recipe is quite robust and quite versatile. You can grab pretty much any spam or um, canned meat really there on two pertaining and complete the task that we're going to be doing. So what you're going to need for this is your can of Spam, a potato or potatoes of your choice. I usually say if you've got a handful of potato, that's enough for one meal. Stuff's actually pretty filling. And then I per I personally like to use coconut oil, so I've got that inside my butter dish here. You can use butter, you can use Pam, you can use whatever it is you want, but make sure you oil your pan for this. Uh, some salt. I just got that inside of one of these little Altoids cans. And last but not least, an onion. All right. <clears throat> I like to get these flat onions. Um, no, they don't grow that way naturally. This one just happened to be flat. You'll find them every now and again when you go into the store. They just pack away a lot better and they're easier to chunk up so that you don't have a big fat bulgy onion. You can actually put this inside of a pouch or something. That's why I kind of prefer these flatter ones in the field. Um, lastly, uh, I did want to state that, like I said, you can use any potato. I'm not going to use this particular potato here, but, uh, you can use sweet potatoes for this. If you'd like to give it a little bit of a sweet tooth, that's completely fine. All right, let's get down here. Talk about the prep phase. Boop. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got going on here, Maya. Bring it down here. All right. Can everybody see? Yes, yes, we can. All right, don't eat candles. They're not good for your lungs. All righty, all righty, all righty. So we've got our pan. <sighs> that clearly worked very well. And um, second time using this particular model. Um, again, all the stuff that we've taken out for the most part this time is uh, friends and family stuff that have been given to me. So I'm going to go ahead and grab our, co our coconut oil. And the reason why I like coconut oil, guys, is because it stores like this, but it, it has a higher boiling temperature than butter. So if you ever want to cut your butter and make it so that it won't just cook off in the pan, you can use this canola oil, or excuse me, this coconut oil. And you can, because this is such a dry, it's a dry good until it gets to a certain temperature, which is about midsummer for me before it starts turning into a, a mush. Um, especially in the winter time, you can put butter in and coconut oil in here at the same time because this will stay dry, or excuse me, it'll stay, uh, solid so you can have both now you do not need a lot of oil this stuff does mix very well it does cover stuff very well i guess the old saying one little dotsy does a lotsy now the best thing i like to do is go ahead and get the vegetables chopped up now and then let them sit in with your uh canola or excuse me i keep saying canola oil your coconut oil while we wait for this thing to heat up I only say that because it will help the flavor of the potatoes in the long run. Just believe me and do it. Um, I'm just chopping these up to some, you know, some reasonable shape. Not a big deal. Doesn't have to be anything pretty. Um, I will say that uh, this meal right here is one of those, it's easier to, I'm not really doing it right now, but it is easier to chunk the potatoes in this particular instance so that you're not taking up so much surface area on your pan while you're cooking. And that way you can put more spam flat on the uh, table. So I recommend, like I said, chunking it here. But um, I'm just, my brain's moving a little bit slow, so I'm not doing what I'm saying I'm doing. We'll chunk these guys up real quick. Just kind of take them and turn them into something else. Here we go. Something like that. There we go. 
And then we'll chunk this guy up. Just like so. Now, we'll be talking in a later video about the versatility of the potato at the campfire. You've got different shapes, different types of potatoes, different meals, different ways to cook the potato. It's a very hearty meal that you can use in a lot of applications. Now, again, you got this flat side. Let me show you all a little bit of secret here. You go ahead and you cut through your skin from side to side, but not all the way back. So when you get to this side, you want to stop at the little red hole, the little, little red eye, and then you do it again. And then you go ahead and cut across the top, just like so. And when you peel this back, it'll stay like this, right? Now you can cut into your onion like so. Bit of a pain in the butt to do right first time, but it is doable. And at some point, it'll just pop out. Boom diggity. And you can put this back like this. And this stuff right here will start to dry up, protect the rest of the onion. And that way you don't have a chunk of an onion making your eyes hurt and it doesn't get all over your stuff. Um, this is going to sound crazy, but if you take some black tape or something, you can put it around there and it'll actually hold it in place. I'm not going to do that right now. It's not a big deal. Uh, that's just food for thought if you're going to be using an onion in a uh, more primitive manner. And uh, do be careful when you're cutting. Me, I'm not right now, so I could easily cut my fingers off. Um, for those of you wondering, by the way, the Kephart knife is actually a really good uh, camp cook knife. I have found that I actually use the Kephart knife in my kitchen quite often at home. I might even buy one just for the kitchen at home. Um, that's kind of how good it is. All right. Food prep is done, pretty much. There we go. And uh, just remember, guys, you don't have to have a Kephart knife to do that. You can use any knife you want. Um, go ahead and sprinkle in. Sprinkle in some salt here. Now, something that I do with my salt that really helps me out, you see how I have rice inside my salt? They do that at a lot of the grocery stores, but I put rice inside my salt here because it's in a field environment, and it'll keep it from chunking up. Let's go over here to the fire and get this guy sauteed up. All right, guys, so low, slow coals. We'll also be talking about different coal types and how you can set coal beds up for cooking better in another video. Um, a lot of folks have been asking for cooking videos a lot, so we'll be making those to the channel. For now, we'll just go ahead and focus on this. So what we've got going on here is we've just got some water boiling off to the side. And right now, we're just waiting for this coconut oil, as you can probably see right here. I'll go ahead and dis differentiate that. It's going to start warming up. And as you can see, I've already covered all this space right here with the coconut oil. And I still have a huge chunk right here and here. And that coconut oil will go a very long way. I think the longest I've taken a butter dish where the coconut oil was three weeks, three meals a day. I still had some left over, so it could probably go a little bit farther than that. Um, that's going to very thickly saturate your pan. And again, it has a higher melting point than butter, so it's great for cooking over the fire. And fun fact of the day, it cuts the really fishy taste of wild-caught fish out of there because of that coconut element. So food for thought. We're going to go ahead and start sauteing this up really, really well. Once it gets to a point where you want it, I'll go ahead and show you that to keep the video a little bit shorter. And then we'll go ahead and add our spam. All right, guys. So we've got our, we've got our potatoes and our onions decently warmed up, okay? I didn't want them to be sauteed down yet, okay? The next step that we do is we go ahead and we get our spam out the can and I'm gonna go ahead and, and just get it straight into straight out the can here just like so for those of you who don't know decanning spam is actually a sport and I am not a very good athlete in that particular sport there we go <clears throat> all right so your spam, in this particular instance, you can slice this if you're sharing this amongst friends. You can slice this like so. But what I'm going to do, and I'm going to chunk it up. And the reason why I'm doing that is, 
I want to be able to kind of make like a uh, breakfast meal here that's just kind of spoon fed edible like so all right we're gonna go ahead and get this last guy chopped in half and come across here yes sir i'm gonna grab a couple of these dudes cut them straight down boom 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 Dog. Oh, there you go, dog. Nom, 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 nom. Thanks, Hazel, for helping me cook. I appreciate you. Good work, kid. Keep up good work. And then we'll go ahead and get it about halfway here. And these little halves are going to cook up real nice on the fire in this particular dish. Another thing it's going to do for you in my humble opinion, is it will trap more heat because you've got all that, as opposed to it just kind of going through, you're actually kind of insulating your, I guess to say you're insulating the uh, vegetables. And so you'll be able to actually cook the vegetables and you'll get that meaty flavor that'll mix in with them while you're cooking because you're only halfway done cooking the vegetables right this moment. This kind of brings that meal to the next level. I know it sounds stupid because it's a simple meal, but again, it really does make a difference. That's why I'm showing y'all. All right. I'm do that. All right, let's get back over here and uh, we can actually put the lid on the pan for this. And then we're gonna go ahead and stir this guy in throw our lid back on, and we're back over here to the fire. All right, y'all. So again, we've got it on here. Get your pan, lid, set that on there, and just let it slow cook. Um, you don't want to do this over a high heat unless you're in a hurry. It actually does help make a difference. So take your time, enjoy your breakfast. That's what you're out here for. As they say, we're out here to smooth it, not rough it. There's really not much for you to be doing unless you're at like a scout jamboree going to do classes. Enjoy your time, you know, take your time, cook your meal, make it nice and enjoy the, you know, slow down. You don't have to go as fast as you do at work, you know, just take a minute and let it cook. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so we've got this thing all fried up. One of the awesome parts about this fry pan, again, is, you know, it's got a lid, something that a lot of fry pans on the market don't have today and a long enough handle to actually be useful. That's something, like I said, you want to make sure with your mess kits that you're finding things that work for you. It's also quite easy to clean. And there you go. It's slightly browned. All your potatoes are nice and soft. Your onions are nice and soft. And because you're using that flat onion, it's going to be a lot easier to eat like this than it will be if you're going to grab like a red onion, etc. Um, Throw whatever spices you want on this. I particularly don't care to throw anything else on here because there's a high sodium content already inside your spam, which kind of saves you time and effort. And again, it'll soak into your potatoes and stuff, and it'll be really good. Go ahead and get yourself a good meal, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. All right, folks, so Ollie's apparently has one of these $1.19 luncheon meats. They're half the size, and they come with the church key. So if anybody is like me, and they're addicted to the church key, and they also want the smaller can, you can get these at Ollie's. And I would assume your secondhand stores may also have them in there if they stock canned food. And Dollar Tree, as well, has them. So go check that out. I'm going to go ahead and get back to making my lunch here. Just some sweet potatoes and some onions from this morning. That other half that onion... And uh, some sweet potatoes is just something that we've talked about a lot on the videos. Um, simple, easy, fill your gut. Uh, really nice stuff. And uh, we'll go ahead and get this put in here. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you in the next one.